Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to New Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, well, tonight uh, we will be studying God's Word. It seems like it's been so long since we have been together. And I know uh, uh, normally we give everybody a minute to try to come aboard and join in. And so we want to do the same tonight. But I just want to uh, thank everyone who has been a part of this ministry, whether you are a member of this church or you are someone who connects with us uh, via fa Facebook Live. I just want to thank you for uh, supporting this ministry. And certainly we are grateful for you. And I pray that something has been said to enrich your life. Um, tonight, uh, we want to look at uh, dealing with spiritual growth. Uh, I feel like the Lord led me that way because uh, in this time, in the season that we're in, so many people have fallen off and they're not where they should be. And so uh, we want to deal with spiritual growth because even in a season that we're in, even in this season of pandemic, uh, this season of dealing with this uh, coronavirus, does not mean spiritually that we still cannot be growing because even if you are stuck in your house, in your room, you still got your Bible. And you still should be not only reading your word, you should still be on your knees praying, uh, seeking God's face in this season. And so uh, this is not the time for us to become stagnant, but this is a time and place where we should be growing. Uh, one of the things that uh, God pressed upon my heart at the beginning of the year was uh, we talked about getting in position and 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 it's so important because as we see right now and what we're dealing with we need to be in position and what is the position the position is a position of prayer it's a position of power it's the position of praise it's the position where we are ready to go to battle uh, because now is the time and the season where we need to be prepared more than ever. And Paul tells us to put on the whole armor of God. Uh, we need to be ready for this uh, demonic battle that we are in right now. And so we want to start with a word of prayer and then we will get started. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you. We honor you, God, and we give you glory. God, we thank you for just being so good and so kind to us, God, allowing us to see yet another day, God. And God, we want to thank you because we didn't know how we were going to make it from the beginning of the year, especially when we came through the month of March, April, and May, uh, God, dealing with everything that's going on. And yet here we are marching towards the end of the year, God, and you have been keeping us, God. We, uh, when you said in your word in Lamentations chapter 3, uh, you talked about the fact that uh, your uh, grace is renewed. Your mercies are renewed every day. And so, God, uh, you talked about great is thy faithfulness. And, God, we thank you for being faithful. Even when we have fallen short and been unfaithful, you have yet still been faithful. You have uh, honored your word when it came to your people, God. And for that, we say thank you. Lord, we pray tonight, God, we lift up our very own Deacon Smith, God, we pray for his family. And God, we know, Lord, that you are no short of your word, that you are a healer and a deliverer, God. And we thank you in advance for having the power that you have, God, that you can do the miraculous. You can do the supernatural, God, and we believe it by faith. And so tonight, God, we ask, Lord, that even as we study your word, that you would give us clarity, understanding, revelation, God that we may leave different than how we came. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, and we all said amen. Amen. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about spiritual growth. Spiritual growth. Uh, spiritual growth is so important. Amen. You should be growing in God. Uh, none of us should be the same that we were when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We ought to be uh, in a different place now than where we were uh, a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, 10 years, and for some, maybe 15, 20 years ago. 
uh, if you are still in the same place, uh, you need to check your connection because there's not what I'm saying. Uh, what I'm saying to you tonight is uh, as long as you stay connected, there ought to be some type of progress uh, from where you began to where you are now. You, you, you yourself ought to be able to tell that you have made some of the maturation from being uh, this babe or this infant to become uh, this adult. It was James that said that we ought to come to a place where we like nothing. That means we ought to come to a place of maturity uh, in our faith, uh, uh, not only just in our faith, but spiritually. You know, we ought to know God on a on a different level than what we've known him before. And so I know uh, I won't get done with everything tonight and I may have to uh, continue next week, but uh, I just want to try to give us some foundation to stand on for this week. Uh, spiritual growth. Uh, first thing, spiritual growth be uh, begins with our mind. Amen, somebody. Uh, spiritual growth begins with our mind. And, and, and the Bible tells us to uh, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And so we have to have the mind of Christ, which means that uh, we have to change the way we think. We can't think the same way we used to think. Uh, when you become saved, now you ought to think differently. You ought to react differently. Amen. You you shouldn't go from zero to 100 as quick as you used to. Uh, now you ought to, you know, throttle down around 40 or 50. Amen. Uh, I know sometimes people are going to test you and work your nerves, but you ought to be in a different place spiritually today than what you once were. What is spiritual growth? I'm glad you asked. Uh, spiritual growth is uh, the process, watch this, of becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. Amen. Spiritual growth is maturity in Christ. Amen. It is the transformation from who you are uh, to who you supposed to be. Uh, in the person of being like Jesus Christ. So in other words, spiritual growth is the process of me becoming more like Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, the Bible tells us, uh, I believe it was Paul that says we ought to become imitators of Jesus Christ, which means that we ought to emulate him. We ought to be like him. We ought to act like him. We ought to take on his characteristics. We Alter. When people see us, they ought to know us that we saved, not by uh, us carrying our Bible, not by us having a big cross around our neck, not by us uh, talking the lingo in front of them and talking about church and, and how service were. But they ought to be able to see the light, the light of the Lord on the inside of us. They ought to be able to see you and tell there's something different about you, not by what you say, uh, not by what you're doing, but just by the aura of God being on your life. The, the anointing of God gives a special glow to his people. That's why we are different from those in the world. We look different. We act different. We talk different than those in the world. Because once you have Christ in your life, Christ makes the difference. That's why he said, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Uh, the only way your light is going to be able to shine is that uh, there is a difference made in your life. Uh, let, let's look at something real quick. Uh, uh, there's a very familiar passage in Philippians uh, chapter 3. Uh, uh, Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse 14. And, and this is Paul writing, and, and I know it's a very familiar passage to, to us all. Uh, let's look at it real quick. Real quick, uh, in fact, let, let me let me just uh, uh, let me read from verse twelve, and then we'll stop at verse fourteen. Verse verse twelve says, "Now, uh, not that I have obtained already obtained this." And I'm reading from the New English Translation, this Philippians chapter three. I'm starting at verse twelve, and I'm going to start at, stop at verse fourteen because that's where the point I want to make. But he says, "Not that I have already obtained this." Uh, that is, I have not already been per. Uh, I have already, not that I have already been perfected. In other words, he's saying, I haven't reached where I need to be. But he says, but I strive, watch this, to lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. In other words, 
there's something that God has done for me already. He has pre-done it in my life. He's already pre-planned. And so I want to lay hold of the very thing that he has laid hold of me or, or he has prepared for me. Verse 13 says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have obtained this. In other words, I haven't reached that mark yet. But, uh, but just know that even though I haven't reached it doesn't mean I'm not trying to get there. And the problem in the body of Christ is a lot of us are, are just happy with saying I'm saved. A, a lot of us are happy just by saying I belong to a church. My name is on the roll. Uh, in the South, they, they would probably say I'm glad I got a, a plot out there on, on, on the land. Well, well, when I leave here, I can be buried with my family. That's not enough. Just to say I'm saved, just to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and stop right there is not enough. That's a great start. Don't get me wrong. That's the best start you can make. But it's more to it than that. So Paul says, instead, I'm single-minded. He says, forgetting the things that are behind me and I'm reaching for the things that are ahead. In other words, he's saying, I'm forgetting all my old accomplishments. He said, because there's something greater in front of me. So he says, I forget what I've already obtained. I forget what I've already achieved. Uh, you, I forget what, you know, the things that I've done in the past. But he says, but I'm reaching for the things that are here. There's greater things in front of me. Uh, so in other words, I need to continue to grow. Now watch this, verse 14, because this is where I want us to look at. He says in verse 14, with this gold in mind, I strive toward the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, he says, there's a place in God that we all can obtain, but the problem is we've got to take the effort to obtain it. And so Paul is saying that I'm striving toward the goal of the upward calling of Christ Jesus. Let me read in, 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 in the King James for you real fast. King James, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize. In other words, there's, there's, a, there's a place in God that we ought to be striving for. There's a place higher in God. There's, there's a higher elevation because he said, I press for the, the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. There's a higher place in God. There's, there's a place spiritually higher that we ought to uh, be trying to obtain, which means that we need to grow in order to get there. But it's achievable if you strive to get there. But the problem I found is a lot of us are okay where we are. You know, uh, we have this, it don't take all that, and I ain't going to do all that attitude. What if God had that same attitude with us? What if God said, you know what, I've done enough for them. I ain't going to do nothing else. Don't pray to me tomorrow because I, everything I've done up to today is enough for you. Uh, what if God took on that attitude towards us? But the Bible lets us know because he loves us so much, uh, his love can't stop right there. And so there's a place in God that is reachable by us, by us all, but it takes effort to obtain it. Amen, somebody. Uh, and the thing that I've discovered is uh, for a spiritual growth of this, uh, watch this. You cannot grow to be like someone you don't know. Amen, somebody. Here it is. We are trying to grow spiritually. And I've already told you that in order to grow spiritually, it's the process of becoming more and more like Christ. But you got to know him in order to be able to grow. Amen, somebody. Uh, I can't have a relationship with somebody and that relationship grow unless I get to know him. How do I get to know him? That means I got to spend time with him. I got to talk to him. Amen. Uh, there's got to be a fellowship there in order for it to grow. Amen. Uh, you can't grow unless you know them. You got to know them. Let's let's look at let's look at the, the word of God. The word of God helps us with that. Uh, when you look at First uh, John two and six, I believe it is that I that I need. First uh, John. 2 and 6, I believe it is what I'm looking for. And he says in this particular 
uh, scripture, he says, he that said he abideth in me ought himself also, let me start over, he that says he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. So in other words, I've got to walk the same walk that Jesus walked. I've got to have the same talk that Jesus had. I've got to have the same character and attitude that he had. When I do that, it displays who I am. But it takes growth for me to be able to do that. When Jesus says uh, that we ought to take up our cross and follow him, some folk, the cross that they have to carry is unbearable to them. It reminds me of the story of the man who uh, was looking in the room and, and, and they was asking him to pick out his own cross to carry. And he was looking at all the different size crosses that were in the room and he looked at some that he considered too big and so he finally found one small enough he said that's the one i want i'll, I'll carry that one and they looked at him and told him that's the one you brought in here and for a lot of us we think we're carrying this great cross when actually the the cross we're carrying is so small amen john 13 and 13 let's go there real fast John 13 and 13. I told, I, I told you, uh, we cannot grow to be like someone we don't know. Let's look at John 13 and 13 real quick. John 13 and 13. And he says, ye call me master and Lord and ye shall and ye say, well, for I am. In other words, he's saying, ye call me master, Lord, uh, and, ye should, and ye say, well, for I am. <clears throat> In other words, he asked them. Hold on, I'm trying to make sure that's the scripture I wanted. Uh, let me go. It don't look like the one I, I originally read, and I know me. I'll write something down wrong in a in a heartbeat. I'll tell you what, let's let's it says you look, New English translation says, you call me teacher and Lord, and do so correctly, for that is what I am. But what I was looking for was what he said, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I ask you to do, is what that scripture that I was looking for uh was supposed to say. Because so many times we call him king of kings, we call him lord of lords, and we, we call him lord over our life, and we tell him, we call him God, we call him Jesus. We have all these different names, but yet we don't do the work or the will of who we call him or say that he is. And so in the particular text that I was looking for, uh, he says, why call me that Lord? You know, why call me Lord? Why call me master? Why give me this name if you do not obey my word? And, 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 and that's what the point I'm trying to make. You can't grow spiritually when the person you're supposed to be growing to be like, you don't even know them. Amen. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5 real fast. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verse 1 and 2. And here it says, Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children and live in love just as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. So in other words, we're supposed to be like him. We're supposed to emulate him. We're supposed to act like him. We're supposed to have his characteristics. We, we are supposed to, when people see us, they ought to see God because uh, to be honest with you, we're the only God that some people will ever see. And so we ought to be like him. Amen. Let's go to 2 Peter and then I'm going to move on. 2 Peter. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Amen. And we're going to look at verse number 5. 2 Peter chapter 1. Verse 5 through 9 is what I want to, uh, to read for our hearing. And it says... New English translation says, 
For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith excellence. Amen. To excellence, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. That's a good one right there. To self-control, perseverance. Uh, to, persever to perseverance, godliness. Verse 7 says, to godliness, brotherly affection. We ought to have brotherly love. It, notice all these characteristics we should have because these are the characteristics of Jesus Christ. To, brother love, to brotherly affection, unselfish love. We ought to love one another unconditionally. You can't tell me you're growing spiritually and you ain't got love for your fellow brother and sister. Amen, somebody. He says in verse 8, For if these things are really yours and are continually increasing, that means they're growing, you're growing, they will keep you from becoming ineffective and unproductive in your pursuit of knowing our Lord and Jesus Christ more intimately. You hear that? If you've got all of these attributes in your life, then you will be able to know God on a more intimate level. And the more intimate uh, you know God, the more you can grow. Because that's what this walk is about. It's about growing. All of us should be growing. Nobody should be in the same place where they started. Everybody should be growing. Amen, somebody. Somebody ought to type in on the screen and say, uh, uh, I'm growing or I'm trying to grow. Or I thank God for growth. That's the one right there. You ought to write on that. Thank God for growth. Uh, watch this. It is imperative. Watch this. In our walk with God that we grow in him and not merely, get this, remain as church goers. Let me say it again. It is imperative in our walk with God that we grow in him and not merely remain as church growers. You shouldn't just be going to church to be going to church just so you can see uh, your girlfriend, your boo, uh, your family members that you ain't seen all week. It, it, it's not just about coming and seeing them. It's coming to worship. Amen. We come to church to have service. Amen. To come to serve God. Offer him our praise and our worship. And not only our praise and worship, we come to offer God all of our gifts, which means not just singing, not just preaching, not just praying, not just standing on the door as an usher, not just uh, attending to the people as, as a nurse, but also offering God our tithes, our gifts, amen, our financial blessing, because it's through him that we, that we have obtained the gifts that we have anyway. Every gift comes from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. So he says that we, it's imperative in our walk with God that we grow in him, grow in him, and not merely remain as church goers. Watch this. We shouldn't remain in stagnancy, which means stationary, because it does not bring about any good in our life. So in other words, when you wonder why people can act the way they act, people can talk to you the way they talk to you, people can treat you the way they treat you, it's because they have become stagnant which means there is no growth, there is no movement, amen. And so it is imperative uh, that we grow in God, that we continue to keep moving. You can't become stagnant. Can I tell you something? Stagnant represents death because if even after a strong rain, if water sits stagnant long enough, it'll begin to stink. It'll have a stench because it really represents death because as long as something is sitting still, uh, there is no life in it. That's why Jesus is represented as living water. He's represented as flowing water. He's represented as rivers of water. That's that's why uh, uh, he, rep because anything that is moving represents life. Stagnancy represents death. So if you are in a place where now you have become stagnant in your uh, relationship with God, in your worship, in your praise, then I advise you to find a way to uh, get back reconnected to God so that uh, you can 
bring about new life in your life once again. Amen, somebody. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 3 and 4. Let's, let's look at it. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. I'm already there, so I must have. Okay, three and four. I read five through nine. Let's let's back up three and four, and it says here. I can pray this. This First Peter, uh, three and four. It says I can pray this because His divine power has bestowed on us everything necessary for life and godliness through the rich knowledge of the One who called us by his own glory and excellency. Watch this here. Peter says that there's a divine power. That divine power is the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Ghost that is in you. And so he's saying, I can pray this because his divine power, the Holy Spirit, has bestowed on us everything needed for life. So in everything that you need for spirituality, God has already given it to you. When he placed his spirit in you, when you accepted him as Lord and Savior, he gave you the power then where you ought to be able to grow spiritually. Amen, somebody. He gave you everything you need. It says right there. It says he has bestowed on us everything necessary for life, watch this, and godliness. That means that uh, everything I need to be like him, to live like him, to obey him, has been given to me through the rich knowledge of the one who called us by his own glory and excellency. Verse 4 says, And through these things he has bestowed on us his precious and most magnificent promises that by means of what was promised you may become partakers of the divine nature. In other words, look, I love that. Because of the promise he made. You remember he promised us that he would not leave us comfortless. He would... He would send the spirit, and the spirit has come, and now it lives on the inside. Spirit lives on the inside of us. Now he's letting us know that we can be partakers of his divine nature. It's because of the spirit of God that lives in you that gives you this divine nature. What's divine nature? That's having the nature of God, the, uh, the likeness of God, the attributes of God, the character of God. Not only that, but now having the fruits of God on display says, after escaping the worldly corruption that is produced by evil desire. So in other words, when Christ came in your life, uh, there was some productivity that took place uh, where now you ought to be producing not just any kind of fruit, but you ought to be producing that good fruit that he says, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Amen. Let me read something to you. Uh, I said I wasn't going to be long tonight. And, and uh, our money always laugh at me when I say that because it seems like I catch another gift. But tonight I, I promise I'm not going to be long when he's not feeling well. So I'm not going to keep him long. Uh, I, I'm just going to uh, try to deal with this part and then we'll come back next week and deal with the rest. But watch this. I'm going to read something to you. When we place our faith in Jesus, watch this here. Because I just got through talking about, in that text, it talks about uh, he bestowed everything necessary through this divine power, which is the Holy Spirit. Watch this. When we place our faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit, watch this, begins the process of making us more like him. Amen. When we put our faith in Jesus, when we first start to believe, when we first accept him, wholeheartedly. When, 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 when Paul wrote in Romans chapter 10, when he talks about the fact that, you know, when we uh, confess with our mouth, when we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that, uh, that we uh, accept him and, and, and confess him that we uh, shall, be, shall be saved, uh, what happens is there's an indwelling that comes in upon acceptance. And that indwelling is what starts to change us. That's why Paul says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have been passed away, and behold, all things become new. So, because everything becomes new, my actions and everything about me ought to be new. Which means I ought not to act the same that I used to act. 
And so he said the Holy Spirit began the process of making us more like him. I know that we were already created in his image, but to just to have the image of him is not enough. I need the characteristics of him as well. And it takes that indwelling to help make me. Because it says right here, conforming us into his image. That's where Romans 12 and 1, uh, let's, let's look at it. Let's look at it real fast. Uh, Romans 12 and 1. Very familiar passage. But I want you to look at it because not everybody, not everybody knows the word. Uh, and so therefore, I'm not going to uh, just take, take it for granted that everybody knows every scripture. Amen. Let's look at it. New Living Translation says, 12 and 1. Therefore, I exhort you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, watch this, that you present your body as a sacrifice, alive, holy, and pleasing to God. That is your reasonable service. Amen. Verse number 2. But here it says, but do not be conformed to this present world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I started off by telling you that spiritual growth begins with our mind. Uh, that's why the enemy attacks the mind so much, because if he can uh, distort the mind, then guess what? The body reacts to whatever the mind tell it to do. Amen. That's why you find people who are walking around here doing all types of evil things because their mind is distorted. You find people walking down the street, talking to themselves, having a conversation. Uh, it, it's because their mind is distorted. Amen. And so he says, uh, be, be not conformed to this present world. Be transformed by the renewing of, how do I renew my mind? I renew my mind by constantly reading God's word, by constantly staying in contact with God through prayer, by constantly staying, uh, being intimate God with God through meditation. He said, by renewing your mind so that you may test and prove what is the will of God and what is good and well-pleasing and perfect. Amen, somebody. So, uh, so we ought to be conforming into his image through his word. Let's look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter I pray this is blessing somebody. Amen. Because it is blessing me. 1 Peter chapter 2. <clears throat> 1 Peter chapter 2. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. Watch this. And because we are conforming, because this word, uh, the Holy Spirit in us, is beginning the process of making us more like him, then that means there are some things that now has to change in our life. Watch this. Uh, in order for us to grow spiritually. Watch this. It says, verse number one. So get rid of all evil and deceit and hypo I mean, hypocrisy and, and envy and all slander. And yearn. Watch this. Verse two. And yearn like newborn infants for pure spiritual milk. In other words, that's some stuff I got to get rid of. And now... Uh, like an infant uh, that desires milk, I ought to desire the spiritual milk, which is the word of God. Amen, somebody. It says here, so that by it, you may grow up to salvation. Bible tells us that we ought to work out our own soul salvation. That means that, how do I work it out? That means that I constantly stay in his word. I constantly read his word. I'm constantly in contact with God. And so therefore, because I'm constantly in contact with God, I'm constantly working out what's in me is being worked out. Amen. So he says, as you, we are to yearn uh, spiritual milk the same way a baby, anybody ever had a, a child, a baby, know that uh, at two or three o'clock in the morning, uh, that baby going to wake up. That baby going to wake everybody in the house up until you get that bottle ready. And see, I, I, I got a little more age than these new age mothers do. I remember uh, I had a sister, and and, and, and I'm going to call her name, uh, Evangelist Ivy Rayford. Uh, 
Her middle name is Jeanette. We call her Jeanette or, or we call her Ivy. And I remember when she had my niece Shay. And I can remember uh, Shay would wake up in the middle of the night and want to bother. And see, back then in the old, the old school, uh, you had to go and pour the milk in the bottle. You had to put water in a pot and turn the eye up. And so uh, the water in the pot had to boil while the bottle was, you, you didn't have no microwaves then. Let me help you out. And so the only way to heat up a bottle of milk was to put it in the pot. I, I know somebody know what I'm talking about. And, and let the pot of water boil to help heat up the milk. And so because that process was so long, that means that the baby had longer to wait uh, for the milk that it desired. And so because it had longer to wait, that means you had to endure the longs of my dear niece Shay. Amen, somebody. And, and that's how it ought to be for, there ought to be a great yearning for God's word. You, 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 you ought not to be satisfied with where you are right now. You ought to have a desire to want more of God because he certainly wants more of you. Amen, somebody. And so we ought to have a, a desire for spiritual milk in order for us to be able to grow. All right. Uh, there has to be, and, 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 and this is where I'm pretty much going to try to stop after this here. Uh, there has to be a desire to grow. Amen. In order to grow. Uh, there has to be a desire to grow because uh, if not, if there's no desire, we would never grow. Amen. You only grow because you have a desire to. Amen. It's just like the person uh, that has a desire to lose weight. And so now they go to the gym. They eat right. They, they, they change everything about them, about their lifestyle in order for them to reach their goal. But uh, there's another person, me, I'm raising my hand, uh, who, who talks about it. Amen. Dreams about it but never does anything to change the lifestyle that they're living. How can I ever reach or obtain goals that I have dreamed of, dreams about if I never do anything to obtain them? And so in order for us to grow spiritually, there has to be a desire there in order for you to grow. Amen. We can only grow. We can't grow unless we want to. Amen. I got a few scriptures and then I'm going uh, to shut it down. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's go there real fast. Ephesians chapter chapter 4. Uh, I know Armani's still saying he ain't going to stop. He ain't going to stop. I I'm watching the clock, Armani, I promise you. Amen, somebody. Armani's my camera guy here. And I thank God for his commitment and steadfastness. Hang with me. Not only on Sunday morning, but be here on Wednesday nights with me hanging out. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Let's read. Verse 13 says, Until we all obtain, all obtain to the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, a mature paid person obtaining to the measure of Christ's full stature. Hold on, let me let me read from a, from a different translation. Because I want you to be able to get the gist of what I'm saying. Okay, it says, till we all obtain unto the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, until a full-grown man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, verse 14 says, that we may no longer children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the, the slate of men in craftiness after the wiles of earth. In other words, there ought to come a time and place where, uh, where we come together and we help each other in our faith uh, to come together not only to help one another, but also to teach one another. Amen, somebody. So that, in verse 14 it said, so that we can be no longer children. In other words, tossed to and fro. In other words, we have to come to a place of maturity where now, Everything we hear, uh, we don't write it off as being gospel or truth. Amen. Because 
Uh, so many times you have people who proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, but they're teaching you their translation. They're teaching you their understanding of it. That's why we have to ourselves dig into the word of God. We have to be like the, the church, uh, the Berean church who would, would, would analyze everything that was taught. Amen. That's the way we have to be. We're not, we, I'm, not, I'm not telling you to be like that so that you can be judgmental with somebody because everybody can misinterpret something in the word of God. But what I'm saying is you ought to study enough that even if I come in here and tell you something untrue, you ought to be able to say, no, 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 Pastor, that, 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 no, I, I, I agree, I, I disagree. And we ought to be able to look at the word together and get clarity together. So he says that we ought not to be tossed to and fro and cared about with every whim, wind of doctrine by the slate of men and craftiness after the wiles of earth. Amen. Verse 15 said, but speaking truth and love, we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, even Christ. Verse 16 says, uh, from whom all the body uh, fitly framed and knit together through that which every joint supplied according to the work and due measure of each uh, several parts, making the increase of the body unto the building up of itself in love. In other words, uh, what Paul is trying to let us know here is we all have to come together in order for this thing to work. In other words, you know, he, he told us that he gave us all these different uh, gifts of the church for the edifying or the building up. We all have to come together. Amen. And when we come together, we can not only build up the body of Christ, but we can also exhort the kingdom of God because that's what it's all, it's all about. Amen. Uh, let's look at Hebrews chapter 5. Amen. Hebrews chapter, chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Let me get there. Hebrews chapter 5. Uh, I want to look at verse number 11. Start with verse number 11. Uh, and we're going to move on to verse 14. Amen. And it says, on this topic, we have much to say, and it is difficult to explain since you have become sluggish in here. In other words, uh, the Hebrew writer is dealing with the fact that he was teaching the reader, the readers in this text about, uh, about Christ's position as being the chief priest. And he's explaining that God is the one who's placed him in that position. And he's, he's one out of the order of Melchizedek. And, and, and so what he's basically saying when he gets to verse number 11 is, He's saying on this topic, in other words, he's saying, I could teach you so much more. But one translation says, uh, basically, you're too slow to understand what I'm saying. Uh, the New English translation says, says on this topic, we have much to say, and it is difficult to explain since you have become sluggish in hearing. I believe the King James, let's look at the King James, see what the King James says. Uh, the King James says uh, in this particular it says, on this topic, we have much to say, and it is difficult. Hold on. Let's, come on. There we go. It says, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. In other words, it's really a picture of them being uh, immature. Amen, somebody. That's the problem here. Because they are immature, uh, they don't quite understand what he's saying or what he's trying to teach them. So in verse 12, he says, for though you should be, in fact, be teachers by now. In other words, he's saying, you've been in this thing a long time. And by now, you ought to be farther along than what you are. Oh my God, I'm talking to somebody I know. He's saying, verse 12, for though you should be, in fact, be teachers by now. There's a lot of people, you ought to be a teacher by now, but instead, you're still stuck in infancy because with infancy, there is no responsibility. 
when when you have people who are still infants in this spiritual walk, that means that they're still dependent on everybody else. You gotta change their pot, their pamper. You gotta, you know, you gotta feed them. You gotta, you gotta do all the work for them. But there ought to come a time and place where you have grown up from where you started, and now you ought to be able to teach somebody else about the word of God. You ought to be able to teach somebody else about how good God is. Amen. Uh, and so he says uh, in verse 12, he says, for though you should be in fact teachers by now, watch this here, you need someone to teach you the beginning elements of God's utterance. In other words, he's saying, you still need somebody to teach you God's word. It's a shame that we are grown in the church We've been raised in the church since we were kids. We've been taught his word. We've been in Sunday school. We've been in Bible study. And some of us have come through every auxiliary that connected to the church. And yet we are still in the same place spiritually. But he's saying, by now, not only should you be a teacher, but instead, because you have not learned, you have not grown, you will still need somebody to teach you uh, the beginning part of God's word. Let's read on. He says, you have gone back to needing milk instead of solid food. Uh, I was thinking about this because uh, everybody that knows me know I have uh, two little angels who are dear to my heart. And, and uh, one is, is Layla, who's two, and, and Miss Autumn, who is one. And, and I remember Sister Lyons and I being in town. And whenever we come in, we always uh, got Layla at the time because... Uh, and and uh, I'm not sure if we've kept Autumn yet or not, but I know with Layla, uh, the thing about Layla was uh, her mother had her on this restrict this strict diet when it came to her bottles. And I remember, you know, uh, my mother's old school mother, down south mother, and I remember us bringing her over, and she was kind of cranky a little bit. And mom was like, uh, "That baby ain't getting enough." You know, that milk ain't enough for that baby. That, uh, she, she needs more than that, you know. Because one thing about a baby, when you start to grow, yeah, milk is good to start to grow. Uh, but after you get to a certain point, milk ain't enough. You need more than just some milk. I wish I had somebody that helped me tonight. If you've ever had a baby, uh, I tell you what, put that, get, get you a six or eight month old and give them some milk and, and, and see how long they're going to sleep or let you sleep. But she said, you, you need to put something, they need to start putting something in that, in that baby's bottle because at, at nighttime, uh, they need a little more substance in order to be able to hold them. And that's the same way we are. We have gone back to needing milk and not solid food. There's a lot of people in the church who right now, they can't handle the word of God. So they need uh, to, uh, they need some milk. They need something watered down to help them. So verse 13, he says for Everyone who lives on milk is inexperienced in the message of righteousness. Amen. Because he is a infant is what the Bible said. But watch this. But solid food is for the mature whose uh, perceptions are trained by practice to discern both good and evil. In other words, those who are on meat understand. Those that who have uh, who are on solid food, they understand which is the word of God. They understand it. And so now they are able to discern both what's good and evil. Amen, somebody. Uh, Lord Jesus, I'm running out of time. One more scripture, then, we, then we're going to quit. I, 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 I said I won't go, go too far and I won't. Let, let, let's look at Psalms 34 and 8 real quick. I got a couple more scriptures. I have to come back to them next week. But I want to look at this one here. Since we're talking about milk and, and, and all this. Psalms, Psalms 34 and 8. Let's get there real fast. Psalms 34 and 8. Let's get there. Psalms 34 and 8. Let's get there. All right. I'm there. Are you there? Psalms 34 and 8. And this is going to be our last scripture for tonight. Psalms 34 and 8 says, watch this. It says, and this is a great scripture. It says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Watch this here. The word taste means to watch this, to discover by experience. I love that. The word taste means to discover by experience. In other words, 
The only way you know something tastes good is you have to have you have to have had to experience it for yourself. And for those who have experienced God's goodness, who have experienced God's grace, who's experienced God's hand of mercy, who've experienced God's uh, anointing on their life, who've experienced God's love, you then you understand uh, uh, how good God is. And there's nothing that can change your mind about God. And because he's good, it stirs you, spurs you, stirs you up to grow. Amen. We're going to stop right there. And next week, we're going to come right back and finish right there. A desire to grow because we will never grow unless we want to grow. Amen. We're talking about spiritual growth. Amen. Amen. Let's close, close in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you. We honor you, God. And we thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, that you are speaking into our life, God, causing us out of a place of being stagnant, God, to grow in you, God, to know you on a more intimate level. God, the word intimacy means into me I see, God, or into you, uh, into me I allow you to see, God. Uh, we have to become transparent, God, before you and not try to hide who we are, where we are, God, because you are all-knowing, God. You know where we are. God, we can't fool you like we can those around us. And so tonight, God, I pray, Lord, that you will stir up the gift in every living being, God, uh, that proclaims to be uh, a member of this body, God, for us. This body meaning calling themselves saved. God, I pray tonight, Lord, you won't let us stay where we are, but we will uh, give us the desire to be in place, God, that we may worship you more, God, know you on a greater level, God. This is my prayer, God, and and we pray, God, for all the sick and shut in, God. We pray for all our senior members, God. We pray for our country. Pray for all leadership, God. And we ask, Lord, that you would not only bless them, but them, God, we ask that you would meet us here again on Sunday morning the same way you met us last week, God. Pour your spirit out on us, God. Give us a word, God, for in times such as these. And we'll be forever grateful to give your name praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And we all said amen. Look. Don't do not forget to send in your tithes and offering. We need uh, all the help and assistance that we can get. Amen. Uh, as members of this body of Christ, we want to make sure uh, that we financially support our church. Amen. And so let's make sure we're doing our part. Uh, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer.